Uh, for the past few days in Rivers' political landscape, there have been calls for Governor Fubara to honor in totality President Tinubu's peace accord and resubmit, represents the 2024 budget to the Martin Sabawule uh, led House of Assembly. On the other hand, Rivers' State Governor Similarly, Fubara has said implementing the presidential resolution on the political crisis in the state is a mark of respect for President Bola Tinubu and should not be taken as a weakness. He said it could surprise his thinking he was weak. Tonight's next make sense of this recent development in River State with Dr. J. Kepele, policy development and advocacy expert. Dr. J. Kepele, thank you so much for joining us this evening. It's good to see you again. Good evening, Jivoke. Thank you for having me. Um, good evening, uh, great uh, audience. Right. So, I mean, it's interesting that we're here again. After four months, uh, you know, four months ago, a crucial meeting with key figures from both sides. An eight uh, points resolution was signed, outlining steps to navigate the political crisis at that time and ultimately restore peace. But looks like uh, that didn't work. Why? Well, it's, it's unfortunate uh, that the crisis in River State started in the first place. Yeah. And uh, very unfortunate that all the parties concerned um, sometimes gives us the impression that they're shifting ground, but at the end of the day, it's getting worse. Um, I think it's also important to underscore uh, some of the very, very uh, issues uh, or key points that has contributed to the state's current um, political insecurity, uh, which eventually uh, becomes a hindrance to governance and creating unnecessary challenge. Uh, for the sake of your viewers who don't have the background information, the issue is... Uh, well, what is considered a conflict between uh, Governor Fubara uh, and his predecessor, uh, Wike, uh, the crisis stems from a, a disagreement between the current governor and his predecessor, uh, who is now the minister of federal capital territory. And of course, this has led to uh, factionalism uh, within the state political landscape. It's important to underscore that. And of course, the uh, overriding effect is that uh, we now have a factional leadership in the House of Assembly. Uh, the disagreement has resulted in the emergence of two, uh, initially, two factional speakers. Uh, within the uh, River State House of Assembly. Of course, one of them have resigned. Each backed by Fubara or Wike, uh, it's important to underscore that. And, and after that, there was a, an intervention by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which, is, which looks to me a fatherly intervention of, of course, uh, there is also the Fubara um, uh, faction that feels that uh, it was more of a political solution uh, that lacks uh, constitutional provision. And I think that has been the bane of all of the conversation uh, and the thing that is creating uh, the problem. Um, the governor, the current governor, accepted that political solution. Uh, I have done some research uh, to show that he has actually implemented some of the agreement uh, mm -hmm. born out of that political uh, solution, you know. So, so course, Dr. Pella, I think that's where uh, the, the, the whole uh, bruhaha is kicking off from. The governor has, you said the governor has implemented some, but he's expected, according to agreement, to implement all eight agreements, eight resolutions. Well, you're okay. The thing is, don't forget that this was purely a political solution. And be it as it may, 
uh, if this political solution hinders a constitutional provision, there's going to be an issue, especially when there are court cases flying here and there that uh, literally constrained the sitting governor from full implementation. Now, it's important to note here that um, the Fobara that I know, I mean, I, I had a meeting with him, and I'm not, I, I've, I'll say that. And he truly and really wants to implement even against the will of his supporters. However, there are countless court cases that constrain him from embarking on full implementation. Now, the question I have for anyone who is listening, because I, I'm, I, I have tried to be as objective as possible. The question I have, do you want the governor to go against court proceedings? Do you want him to become unruly and not obey the rule of law? Even the president will not want him to do that because both of them swore to uphold the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So if there are issues that borders on constitutional provision that is in the political solution for what I will do and what I will advise the governor to do is to get back to the people who made the political solution and present the matter as it is and said, look, I'm constrained by this, I'm constrained by that. Don't forget that he was told to withdraw all court cases. Whatever court cases he instituted, I'm sure he had withdrawn or he, it, it, those court cases are no longer pending. But there are countless court cases that individuals independent of him had already that are already in the court and many of them have obtained judgment restraining him from for instance presenting the budget uh, or representing the budget now my question is what would anybody do if you are in the stead of governor fubara what so, would you do dr pele uh, now you're saying uh, it's important for the governor to go back to the drawing table, go back to uh, that resolution and uh, to, I mean, to discuss whether or not it's favorable. But many are saying uh, if the governor knew that uh, that resolution was not favorable to him, why did he sign? Jumoke, let's, let's not even go there. You're dealing with a young man with very little or no political experience, granted, but very, very grounded in administrative experience. So he has all the qualification to lead as a governor. Now, before a political giant like the president, in the first place, do you want, do, do, does anybody want him to go against the president or tell the president to his face, I will not sign? But, but, but Dr. Kelly, that that's be... what you're, you're, you're trying to say now. You're asking him to go back to the drawing no. table. That's what you're practically no. saying. No, no, no. What I'm saying, uh, Jimoke, is for him to go back. Life is all about negotiation. Go back and let him know what the challenges are. And let him advise you. Go back and say to him, look, I can't represent the budget, for instance, because I have this court case that has been signed on, uh, uh, um, served on me. I have that, I have that. What would you want me to do? Period. All right, so what do you, think, what you, do you think is stopping uh, the governor from representing the budget? He has several court cases. There are several court cases restraining him from representing that budget. He has several court cases. He has several court cases that is even restraining him from recognizing these uh, 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 lawmakers that had left the, uh, their original political party. So you understand? It... However, however, 
he still allowed, and I, I, I did my research before I came to this show, they are still being paid up to date with allowances. He didn't stop it. If he stopped it, maybe it was today or, yeah, or a few hours ago. But I did my findings. They are still receiving all the allowances and everything, you know. But then again, again, if we want to uphold the rule of law, are we going to advise a public servant to go against the rule of law, to go against the very constitution that he swore to uphold? It will be his political waterloo in future because people, including myself, I will hold him accountable because mm -hmm. it will be a violation of the Federal Republic of Nigerian Constitution. But Dr. Pele, can you help me understand the situation? Solution. If this uh, court cases were not instituted by the governor, why are these court cases stopping him from representing the budget? Because this looks like the major issue here. Yeah, Jumoke, we're saying the same thing. And I've answered this question time and time again. In the heart of um, uh, uh, Governor F uh, Sim Fumara, okay, I believe he wants to represent. Okay. He wants to represent. But if he's constrained by legal bottlenecks, tons and tons and tons of law, um, 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 court orders, restraining him from doing that. My question is, will anybody advise him to go against the court? Mm. That's why he's not representing it. If he had gone ahead to stop the court proceedings that he started himself, okay, or he instructed his lawyers to, and he has gone to withdraw it, he has, out of good faith, don't forget, I'm not defending Pumara. Mm -hmm. I'm just presenting the matters as they are. Mm -hmm. If you have gone ahead to do that, if you have gone ahead to say, you can have your salary, I don't want issues. I mean, let's, let's be frank. He's done well. But that's, all of that is not the issue. That's not even the core subject of this, subject matter of this discussion. The thing is, this whole thing is crippling us. This whole thing is eating into the fabric of every rivers indigent and the, this entity called River State. And it needs to stop. It needs to stop. Someone somewhere needs to call both of them to order, speak to them, probably there are people that are looking at these issues with the wrong lenses. Can somebody correct their retina and let them know that they are creating a logjam for pure democratic governance? You know, I think, I think this is the issue that we need to face and resolve it once and for all. There are issues of violence and insecurity uh, concern. All right. People are not, yes, people are concerned. Mm. There, is, there are issues of economic development that would have taken place as a result. There are issues of the economy of nation, of this country, being in danger. If, God forbid, and I stand here to say no youth of rivers indigent should do anything foolish that will put that state in a jeopardy and of course the entire country all of us must stand up and peacefully resolve this issue i have made some calls today i had to call bishop kuka myself asking and pleading for the uh, peace committee to come into this matter and bishop kuka explanation is that he had reached out to both of them and he needs them to respond to him so that he can swing into action and begin to bring. Because this is all about uh, political, making sure that, you know, there is peace. If, if, they, if they will go out and sign peace accord uh, during mm -hmm. election, they can also institute peace accord in a political 
crisis situation right. that we have in our hands. All right, you know, the president, I believe, love River State. I Absolutely. believe every God-fearing person love River State. And we must not allow River State to boil. Right. So, you know, I kept asking that question because as of this morning, some lawyers were insisting that there is nothing stopping uh, the governor from representing that budget to the House of Assembly. But then do you think the president will be disappointed at this time? Well, if, if, if you follow the rule of law, you know, don't forget that this president was one person who stood for rule of law. And he got the accolades, the applause of the entire nation. You know, his work during Nedeko, I, 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 I wasn't that too small to, to know, you know, what President Bola Tinubu stood for. How he literally, literally fought a sitting president and won. You know, we should go back to history and remember thing, this kind of thing trying to repeat itself. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm waiting to see a lawyer who will say that a governor can violate court orders. Then that person should cease from being a lawyer. If somebody who, who says that if a constitution says don't do this, that, that he can go ahead and do it. I mean, are we banana republic? We are a, a lawful and law-abiding country. And we must not be seen or anybody push us to, to be perceived as people who are very unruly when we are trying to preach mm. the rule of law. All right. I don't think that is acceptable. Right. Uh, we may there need to invite a lawyer to help us uh, with the legal angle to this matter. But Dr. Pella, you listed a seven-point yeah. agenda to address this this ampers. You say it is important to unearth the root causes of these two warring parties. But in a situation where neither Wike nor Fubara had come out to accuse each other of anything specifically, why do you think either of them hasn't done that? Well, I, I think they say there's a simple saying that if you keep doing things in a certain way and, and you keep getting a different result. It would be madness to think that you're getting it right. You know, you can't keep doing things, getting the same result, thinking that, you know, that's the way to go. Okay. Um, strategy will teach you how to do things. It will also teach you how not to do that thing so that you don't get the expected result. We need to change strategy. And I think the idea of getting individuals like Abdul Salam, uh, former heads of states, General Gowan, to call both of them in the same room, sit down and tell them what is the problem. And that's how to get to the root cause. What is the issue? Why, did we, why are we here in the first place? What brought us here? And I can tell you, Pubara may have a very different oh, uh, explanation that does, may not make sense as well as the former governor. And these elder statesmen can look them in the eyes and say, my friend, you're wrong. This is not the way to go. This is not what I'm hearing from you. I mean, people have gone and say things that they think that they are right. Meanwhile, they are absolutely wrong. You know, maybe, maybe this direct mediation strategy will unearth the very thing that is causing this. Because truth be told, the thing that is responsible for all this quagmire are stuck in the mind of both Fubara and Wike. And until somebody with expert knowledge in conflict re resolution is able to go into their hearts and pull that thing, you know, by simply asking them the right question. And it has to be somebody that can be trusted by both parties. Mm -hmm. It has to be somebody that doesn't have any interest whatsoever. That is why I, I am, like I said, I spoke with Bishop Coker today. Somebody like that 
will play a very vital role in this mediation. This is what he has, all his life, he has been in conflict resolution. You know, resolving sinner and, 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 and the righteous. Mm -hmm. And, you know, bringing out sinners to, to become the righteous. So it's a, it's a simple thing. He can do it. And several others. He's not the only one. You know, let us bring people that are outside the state who, are, who have proven integrity, who mm -hmm. the people that we can say, they don't have anything to do. All use. right. But does it bother you, you that, uh, Dr. Pelle, does it bother you that the national leadership of the PDP has kept mute on this matter? You know, it, it doesn't only bother me, it's, it's, it's very surprising. Very surprising. I, I expected them to do more. But why do you think I this is so? I expected them to step in, you know. Say, say that again. Why do you with, think uh, uh, the national leadership of the party hasn't said anything? Hasn't intervened. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That is surprising to me. I don't know what they stand to gain by watching this whole thing play out the way it's playing out. You know? And, and, and I had taken my advocacy to a number of these political leaders. You know? And I, 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 I respect a, 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 a many of them. You know? And truly and really, in spite of all the issues and all that, there are many of them who mm. truly want democracy to reign in this country. And many of them have fought for it, you know. And, you know, Jumoke, I am very concerned. I'm one, concerned because that's my state. Two, I know. concerned because issues like this is what can lead to a real insecurity situation either in the present or in the future. These are some of the things that can trigger issues that will become a huge problem in the hand of a central governor, go, 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 government. So we must not allow it, you know, and nothing stops the president to call some of these elder statesmen and say, listen, I have tried to mediate between these my two sons. Can you please come and assist me and talk to them? Hmm. Or do you think they the need president to needs to call both parties again? Say that again. Do you think the president needs to call both parties again one more time? Well, that's an option. That's an option. All right. But that's an option that the president must also be willing to address the issues the way they are. Mm. It's, it's an option. But if I'm in his shoes, I would rather want others to do it okay. and give me a report. If the president calls um, um, the former heads of states and say, listen, I need you guys to help me mediate to, uh, um, 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 over this issue. You know, two of my sons are involved you know, mediate over them and give me a report. I guarantee you uh, um, it, it will be done. There is none of them that if the president gives the directive that they should meet with this person, I don't think any of them will go against that presidential instruction, you know. Even, even if the president wants to stay clear, but endorses, you know, the move for some of these very credible statesmen to get involved, I think we will get results. But this idea of trying to play, you know, it's almost like playing the all, all, all the, the, the um, you know, trying to bury your head in the sand, you know, and pretend that there's no problem. Uh, and I'm not saying that's the case of the president. I'm just saying generally, you know, uh, this is like sitting on a cake of a gunpowder and it's not good mm -hmm. for this very democracy that many of us are paying with our sweat and blood to ensure that we have a vibrant and inclusive democratic process. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's concerning and more concerning because 
it is happening in my own state. Mm. You, you don't know how much sleepless night that I had to go through when I hear certain things, you know, because I have cousins, I have right. brothers, I have friends, you know, and it doesn't necessarily have to be River State. It can be Sokoto, and it shouldn't be anywhere at all. All right. Dr. Pella, let's go on a break, and when we come back, we will continue this conversation.